Hello, God bless you. Today I'm gonna show you the my uh, dialogue with my mother-in-law with Jesus. Uh, it's like a Bible study. We're talking about law and grace. As you can see on Luke 18, if you go to Luke 18, the rich man ruler asked Jesus, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus said, uh, obey the Ten Commandments. That is the requirement, obey the Ten Commandments. But if you go to uh, Acts 16, a man came to, to the Acts of the Apostles, uh, that was Acts 16, and he asked, what must I do to be saved? And uh, the Apostle said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household be saved. So that's a big difference, right? Uh, under the law, as you can see, Jesus walked under the law on earth. He walked under the law. So uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is the continuation that is that is the description on how Jesus walked under the law. Those are the words of Jesus. But after the cross is something different. There are a lot of different things that we can uh, see under the law and under the new covenant, which is under grace. We are now under grace. So let's uh, listen our dialogue together with my mother-in-law, and we had a chance to talk about Jesus. God bless you. Stay still and listen to it. God bless you. Okay, this is like the story of Bible study. What do we do? Okay. I have my mother-in-law here today, and uh, we're we're going to study a bit about grace and law. So, um, um, I hope you can hear us. I have a face like this, <laughs> like that. Okay, let's pray, mom. Father in heaven, we come to you as we study your word today, Lord. Um, be the, uh, um, we'll follow your word, Lord Jesus. Let the word be uh, a blessing upon the hearers and to us too, Lord. And, and Jesus, uh, rebuke the spirit of error in the name of Jesus. We come to you in agreement and we praise to you. We give you glory. Not of me, but all of you get the glory and honor. Amen. All right, so uh, we're going to study about the grace and law. Huh? We go to Galatians first. Galatians chapter 1. You know, we're reading. <laughs> okay. uh, chapter 1, verses 6 to 12. Six, Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 to 12, guys. Chapter 1, verses 6 to 12. Verses 6 to 12. Yeah, you got it? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 to 12 and I marvel that ye are so so can you read it? I can't see it and I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are or an angel. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught of it, but, the, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, amen. Um, Mark, so who's talking here? Oh, uh, <laughs> Well, the Peter no Paul Paul oh. is the one uh, writing here on the Galatians okay uh, what basically is Paul saying uh, that it was um, the, it was <laughs> Jesus Christ who revealed to him the gospel amen so there is no another gospel it says here if you preach another gospel you will be cursed amen did he say that, that clearly? Amen. I did not say that. The Bible says it. Amen. If you preach another gospel that the, that Paul did not preach, you will be a curse, according to the Bible. Amen. 
because everything that we say here is our words of Jesus Christ, revelation yes. of Jesus Christ. It says here, verse 11 and 12, right? So if, if any man preach another gospel, and it's not the teaching of Paul now, if they are cursed. Amen. We will be I don't want to be part of that curse. Amen. <laughs> That's Amen. why I wanna I wanna preach the gospel of Paul. Yes. Uh, do you do you wanna be a part of that curse? No. No, so <laughs> we have to remove it. So we follow the teaching of Paul. But that doesn't mean that we don't we the the, the Bible there's no contradiction of the on the Bible. The Bible is uh it's like a stepping stone. It, there's like a there's like a, when you were born nineteen Something. Uh, there, there was no cell phone or anything. Right. And now, uh, now there is a cell phone. There's an internet. Uh -huh. The same thing with the Bible. During, during the Old Testament, it goes up. When Jesus Christ came, he, he made the the way of salvation easy Amen. for people, and that's the grace. Amen. So let me ask you something. What do you mean by grace, Mom? Uh, grace is God's unmerited favor. Amen. Unmerited and earned favor. When we say grace, it supplies. Isn't it says that uh, uh, Second Peter one verse three? I've given you life and have it more. Uh, uh, I've given you life at, uh, pertaining to life. I've given everything pertaining to life and all godliness. Amen. So it's he it supplies already at Amen. the cross. At the end of the cross, he supplies it. Amen. That's why grace. So he 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 revised everything. Now we're gonna talk about the law before we go on. I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read something what I wrote about the law and and grace right now huh? the law and grace and the the, the law is uh, first of all a covenant there is a covenant there is two two covenant in the Bible old covenant and the new covenant the new covenant is where the Paul uh, wrote the old the, the new covenant the old the covenant is like an agreement right we talk about it is an agreement that is like husband and wife. It's, it's revocable. Amen. So the old covenant is between God and the Jewish people. So the old commandment was given to Moses, first uh, Gen one verse seventeen. Grace and truth came from Jesus Christ, and and the law came from one man, from Mo Moses. So grace. So which one is greater, the servant or 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 Jesus Christ? Neither one. The servant is not not greater than the yeah so jesus christ is greater yeah so so now the old covenant is between jewish and god so i don't know how in the world uh, we got into that we're not supposed to be in that agreement we're gentiles you know only yeah. jewish the only jewish are involved in there we have nothing to do about it so it is that the old the, the agreement old covenant is not only ten commandments it's not only ten commandments it's very involved 613 laws but let's say on Sunday, like the Sabbath day, Jesus Christ healed, right, Mom? Yeah. And the and the and the and the, and the Pharisees, the, you're not supposed to be healing on Sunday. It's Sabbath day. You're not supposed to be healing on Sabbath day. That's a law. Yeah. That's a law. Yeah. But Jesus Christ rebuked them. Yeah. So what if, if what if the, there is a law that saying that uh, today Sabbath day you cannot use the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to use the bathroom. See, these are 613 laws. It's not only the the law of Moses. Yeah. So th this is this is the agreement of God. God deals with deals called the covenant with man. He deals with that uh, the covenant. He deals with the covenant for man. He deals with us through covenant, through covenant. The new covenant is between Jesus Christ and God, and the beneficiaries are we are the beneficiaries. Amen. It's just like the insurance. Do you have the beneficiaries? Your children are your beneficiaries when somebody passes away. Right, mom. Amen. Amen. Okay, so the old covenant is all is written in a tablet, a stone. You know, mom. Right, the old, the, the new the, the Ten Commandments. Yes. But uh, okay, but the new covenant the covenant is is given through the Spirit of God. Okay, the old covenant is always conditional. If you do this, you will get the blessing. If you don't do this, you will be cursed. I'm right. Amen. I'm right. So you have to strive hard to be good. Yeah. It's just like a Santa Claus is coming to town. You better be good, or you, or you won't get no present, right? Amen. That's what we do. But uh, but new covenant is unconditional. And then the the old covenant heal it. It kills because it condemns you. It condemns you. But the, the new covenant, Jesus, uh, it gives life. Amen. Amen. Okay.
and the, the old covenant is about lack a lack of faithfulness of men if they're not faithful to god they won't get blessings am i right and and the new covenant is about jesus christ's faithfulness it's not about us it's jesus faithfulness the new covenant because he's faithful to his father he obey right and the the old covenant shines the shines the the the, the light of the sin your sin it shows your sin who you are it is a mirror how bad you are yeah the old covenant but the new covenant shines the light of the perfection of jesus christ Amen. right Amen. and the old covenant increased sin i will tell you later i, I will show you everything the, the, the verse but the new covenant uh it makes men holy it makes Amen. us holy then the old covenant is it gives condemnation mm -hmm. it condemns you but the, the new covenant gives justification right and the old covenant is sin consciousness because you have not you you disobey one 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 law you 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 disobey them all yeah. james 2 verse 10. Yeah. if you disobey one law you dis you guilty of all the, the new covenant is is jesus christ consciousness and righteousness his righteousness amen and the old covenant is you have to sacrifice the blood of animal every year yeah but the new covenant is that it takes away your sin forever Amen. permanently that's the new covenant now i have i have i have, I have done uh, this thing we go now to let's go mom to matthew matthew 5 verse 17. matthew 5 verse 17. 5 verse 17. and then verse 5 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the, or, the prophets. or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Amen. Who said that? Jesus. Jesus Christ. So he came not to destroy the law. Okay, what is this law he's, he's talking about? We're going to go there in a little while. He came to what? what, did, what did, why Jesus Christ came out? To fulfill the law. Fulfill the law. So if he comes to fulfill the law, can men fulfill the law now? No. Can no. men fulfill the no, law? We no, we couldn't do it. No. So you can't say that I obey all the Ten Commandments. You cannot say no. that. <laughs> That's why the rich man ruler said, good master. Why did he say to Jesus, good master? And Jesus Christ is the only God is good. No. Why did he say that? Because he does, does not recognize Jesus Christ as God. Because if you recognize God, uh, Jesus Christ as God, he would say that, uh, he would say that, no, 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 God, I did not obey all the commandments. But he accepted, I obey all the commandments, he said. And he asked, what must I do to be saved, right, mom? And remember, mom, Jesus Christ was walking under the law on earth. I'm right. Because he did not die yet. Amen. He's walking under the law. Amen. So what did Jesus say to the good to, when he said, what must I do to be saved? What Jesus Christ said? Um, to give up all his riches. And another one, the first one. Uh, obey. Uh, obey all the commandments. Obey all, all the ten commandments. So he said, I obey them all. Right? So he, yeah. he, he did not he did not see Jesus Christ as God. Because if you see Jesus Christ as God, he would say, I cannot obey them all, Lord. Yes. But he said that obey them all. He uh, he said, "Good master." He don't look at Jesus Christ as God. Mm -hmm. So he it, so we, I came to fulfill the law. Jesus Christ wouldn't say that if somebody had fulfilled the law. Amen. Not even Moses. I'm right, Mom. I'm right. Amen. 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 Okay, let's go to Romans. Romans chapter uh, chapter five. Uh, Romans chapter five. It's it's actually. Uh, Oh yeah, chapter five, verse eight. Romans chapter five, verse eight. Yeah, go ahead and read that. But God commanded His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's how much Jesus Christ loved us. Amen. While we were still sinners, He died for us already. And then jump to verse twelve. Read it. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. And death by sin, and, and so death passes upon all men, for that all have sinned. See, death passed all to all men. We deserve death. Am I right, Mom? Amen. Because of Adam. Adam sin, right? Amen. Adam sin. And then jump to verse 18. 
18 to 21. Uh, chapter 5, verse 18 to 21. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to con condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So why did the law enter? Why was the law given? For judgment? No. <laughs> Look at verse 20. Why, why the law was given? Law entered, the offense might be about. See? So that your sin will increase. The law came so that you, your sin will, will increase. Okay. The, you're cautious about the law. Try, try, to, try to think about, like, like let, let's say we have little Ariana, right, Mom? Uh -huh. you, tell, you tell to little Ariana, little Ariana, don't touch that. Don't touch that. But if you're not looking, she's gonna touch it. Yeah. See, she's gonna touch it because that that is the law. That is the law. So it, it will increase. The more the more you the more the more the law, the more the sin increase. But it says here, even if you if the sin increase, the grace super supersede supersede the the sin. Amen. Supersede the sin. So the grace is greater than sin. Amen. Grace is always greater than sin. Amen. So the, the the law entered, the law process entered, so that your sin increased. Can you can you see that that that's that we don't know about that? I was ignorant before. I don't know anything about that too, until I found out the truth. That I read the Bible. You know, and you see see the judgment. You see there is a condemnation already. You see that verse 18, huh? yes. There is already condemnation upon us because of disobedience of Adam. Right, mom? Yes. So, but Jesus Christ, the sin had reigned unto death, verse 21. Even so, my grace reigned through righteousness. Amen. So it reigned, the grace reigned through righteousness. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's jump to verse, uh, 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 verse, uh, let's jump to verse 14, chapter 6, verse 14. Chapter 6, verse 14, verse 14, mom. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Uh -huh. Go ahead. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. Verse 17. Know ye not that... Verse 17. That verse 17. Yeah. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that from the doctrine which was delivered unto you. 18. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Amen. See? See, the sin shall not have dominion over you because you are under grace. Amen. So Amen. when we say under grace, right now, it is not true. Like, uh, okay, what you saw is what you read. Do you believe that, Mom? Yeah, yeah that, that is true. But right now, God is not mad at us no more. There is no punishment because he has given us free will now. What is right and wrong? But there will be judgment coming. When we, we see at the judgment throne, he will judge us where we're going. Even the words that we say, he will judge us. Amen. But there's no punishment now because only blessing he gave. Yes. There's no more curse. No more curse. The curse is gone. Amen. No more curse. The, the, the people being cursed because they believe that they're cursed. That's why there is curse. But, the, but blessing came already. So, see, the sin will not have dominion over you because you're under grace. Amen. It means that Jesus Christ, if you're under grace, you believe on Jesus, right, Mom? Amen. And you believe what he did, and you become born again, the sin will not have dominion over you. Amen. It's impossible. The grace of, even if you sin, God, God, God is still giving you a chance to repent, Amen. to change. Amen. He's not going to punish you right away. He's not that kind of God because he already finished his work. So many of us finishing the works of Jesus, he already finished. Amen. We're still finishing what he, did, what he has done, Amen. but he's, he already finished. Am Amen. I right, Mom? Amen. Okay, let's go to um, look at, look at uh, the same chapter, Mom. Chapter 6, verse 6 to 7 until, 
at, at six, chapter six, chapter six, verse six twice. Six verse? Yeah. Knowing this. No, chapter seven. Chapter, oh, chapter seven. seven. Okay. Yeah. Chapter seven, verse six. Chapter seven. And now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Okay. What, what is the oldness of the letter? What is what is this letter about? The law. The law. <laughs> it was written in ink, right? Uh -huh. See, but he wants us to have the newness of his spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit that's leading us right now. Amen. 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 Look at verse seven now. Verse seven. What shall we say then? Is is the law sin? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Okay, where did you where can you find the the, the law that says thou shalt not covet? Which law? One of the Ten Commandments. See? So he's talking about the Ten Commandments here. He says you verse seven. Uh, what shall we say that is the law sin? God forbid, nay. I have not known sin, but by the law. Yeah. He has not known sin until the law came. Until the law told him. <laughs> Am I right now? This is the Bible saying. Amen. If we didn't say that, we did not make it up, it's the, it's the Bible who said that. Amen. And every revelation that, that, that is saved here is from Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Am I right, Mom? Amen. So he had not known sin until the law came. Am I right, Mom? Yes. Thou shalt not covet. Okay, verse 8, Mom. But sin? But sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of conspicuous concupiscence. For huh? without the law, sin was dead. Okay, say that again, Mom. Without the law? Without the law, sin was dead. Amen. Amen. So if there is sin, there is. If there's a law, there is. Uh, sin. There is sin. If there's a law, there is sin. Without the law, there is no sin. Sin. It's just like it's just like the the law of the land. Yeah. You know, you speed you speed it, you speed up, you come to the fast speed, speed, yeah. speeding ticket. Yeah. Because you disobey the law. Amen. So you, you, you sin. But when, when there's no cop look you look at it, there's no cop, I can speed up. Yeah. I can speed up. Whatever is not is is not good, you wanna do it. When the doctor said don't eat sweet, you still want to eat sweet. Amen. Okay, it, 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 but then Jesus Christ took fulfill the law. Amen. Fulfill the law. He did it for Amen. you and me. Amen. Okay, now verse 9, Mom. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. <laughs> See that? <laughs> See that, Mom? <laughs> he was alive without the, the law. law. And when the commandment came, what happened? Sin revived. And so the commandment kills it. It kills. It, it gives you curse. It gives you curse, and it will kill you. Amen. All right. So verse verse ten, mom. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. You see that? The commandment which was ordained to life, I found I found to be unto death. So it's very it's very clear, guys. It's very clear, those who are listening, that the commandment will will kill you. Am I right, Mom? Amen. I'm, I'm talking about physical death, not only the spiritual death. Amen. Verse 11, Mom. For sin taking occasion by the commandments deceived me, and by it slew me. See? It deceived you. Yeah. It deceived you that because of wrong teaching, so many churches thought, thought, thought about the law. You have to follow this or you will, you will not be blessed. You will be cursed if you don't follow this. Yeah. That that is under the law. Yeah. And you don't know that, that it will kill you and it's slew you. Okay, verse 12, Mom. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Verse 13. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin that is might appear. appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding full sinful. 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Okay, so you see, the law is holy and good, it's perfect, there is nothing wrong with it. Right, Mom? Amen. The problem is we are, you know? We are, we are, we cannot follow the law. Amen. Am I right, Mom? Amen. We cannot can't follow the law. Them all. Uh -huh. You can't keep them all. You can't. If you say that I did it, I'm a good person, no. no. No, 
You're lying. And you know, oh, otherwise, if you did follow the law, if the law is righteous, mom, do you think Jesus Christ came? He wouldn't have to. No, if the law give us righteousness, okay, if the law give us righteousness and all this, do you think Jesus Christ came? No. No, it will, it will not be. No. It does, that will give us righteousness. Amen. Jesus Christ will not come if the law give us righteousness. Amen. 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 Okay, now, but verse 8, look at verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 1, mom. He's saying, chapter 8, verse 1. Uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Okay, okay, well, verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay, so now, the Spirit of God made us free from where? From who? From the law sin. of sin and death. What is this? The Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. The, the Mosaic Law. Amen. Okay? But there is therefore now no condemnation if we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Right? Amen. So if we are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. Amen. Because the law condemned. You didn't follow it. You're guilty. You feel bad about yourself because you, did, you didn't do it. You know, you feel bad about yourself. It condemns you. Am I right, Mom? Amen. So this, this, let's go back to our verse, uh, chapter 7, verse um, verse, uh, let's see, uh, uh, verse 7, chapter 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? If, if the law sin. If the law sin, God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known love, except the law had said, Thou shalt not judge. Okay, okay we're ready. That, 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 there is something that I want to read. It. This, uh, it's saying about... Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Um, okay, let's go to chapter 10 now. Chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verses 3, verses 3. Verse 3? Oh, 3, yeah. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Four. For Christ is the end of the law of righteous, for righteousness to everyone that believes it. Okay, for Christ is the what, Mom? The end. It's the end of the law. The end of the That's law. it. No one, no one can argue with that. Amen. Jesus Christ is the end of the law. He did it. Verse 5, Mom. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Six. But the righteousness which is a faith speaketh on this wise say not in this in my heart who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above okay so you see that mom Moses described the, the law as righteousness if you live by them right mm -hmm. but our righteousness right now is on faith by Jesus Christ right mom Amen. okay now we're, we're moving on we, we have a couple of verses we're done Okay, let, 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 First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. First Corinthians? Uh, yeah, First Corinthians chapter, because mom, because the law, you have to exert your effort. You have to perform in order to be good. Amen. You know, yeah. you, have to, you, have to, you have to be good to, to get good. Amen. If you're if you bad, then God is bad to you. That's what it says. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, God demands righteousness and perfection of the law. But no one can keep them. Amen. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 6, 15, verse 56. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Okay. Where is this? Where is the strength of the of, of sin? In the law. In the law. You see? It's clear. Uh -huh. Oh, who's saying that? It's the Bible. The strength of sin is in the law. So the the, 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 the law increases. The law came because so that you sin increased. Then you might think how bad, how, how, how bad is God, that's how bad God is. He, do you know why he gave the law? He gave the law so that the, the, the sin increased so that the man, the law is still good. The law is still good because we have not seen the righteousness of, of Jesus Christ without the law. Because we realize that we cannot do everything. We realize that people, People realize that they cannot move without Jesus Christ. The, the people realize that they can't do anything without Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why the law came. Amen. They can't, they can't, they can't, they can't, no one can boast them. I did it. No one. 
No one can boast it. That's why the law came. So that they realize that they need Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can see. Now we'll go to uh, 2 Corinthians uh, verse, uh, chapter 3. Uh, chapter 3, verse 4 to 4 to 7. And such trust have we... Uh, Second Corinthians chapter three, mom. Oh, uh, chapter three, yes. Yeah. Verses four through seven. Verses four, four six to seven. Uh, six to seven. Yeah. Who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious. So that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses with the glory of his countenance, which glory was in the in his done away. You see that, Mom? So what happened? What happened? What 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 is what what is this thing that's killing? Um, Look at verse six. Then verse six. Verse six. The the letter. The letter, which is the law. The law. The law kill it, but the spirit of God what gives life. gives life. So it's clear. Amen. Am I right, Mom? Amen. This, you see how Jen ten ten. I uh, uh, I I come to give you life yeah. and have it more abundantly. Exactly. So we see that. So the spirit give life, and the, and, the, and they call now the, the which is written in gravy stones are is a ministration of death. Death. Very clear. We did say that it's the Bible. Mm -hmm. Then how come? Nobody understood that. The church don't understood. I, I, can you explain that to me, Mom? What? How come the church don't understand it? They were preaching different things. They don't understand it. What Jesus Christ has done. How come they don't understand? It's in the Bible. I don't. I, I don't get it. You know? Because I I think because they um, they take the Bible as a whole and they was hard for them to separate the old from the new. <laughs> We don't, we don't separate them. It's a continuation. It, you know? it is, but yeah. I'm talking about the law from, right. from the great, you know, from great. Right. And, and, and if you get, if you receive salvation and become a new creature, you won't want to sin again. You exactly, know? yeah. You don't want to. Yeah. Uh, Christ, uh, uh, sin shall not have dominion over you. Right. Because you're under grace. Right. The Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments to be in our heart. Yeah. Now, now we that you know what's, what's in our heart now? Is the love the of love. Christ? Exactly. Is, that is the overflowing that that's going in there. Exactly. Okay, let's go to uh, two more verses, man. I have a couple more verses. Let's go to Galatians, chapter three. Three. Galatians chapter three. Yeah. Uh, Galatians. Chapter three. Uh -huh. Okay, chapter three, verse twenty-three. Okay, chapter three, verse mm. twenty. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Go ahead. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring me unto Christ, bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Go ahead. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Okay, you see that law? The, the law, mom, is like what? A it schoolmaster. A schoolmaster. It's like you cannot move without being instructed. Uh, Am I right, mom? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you give me the stick. You cannot move without being instructed. In other words, you're like a little kid or baby. Uh, you are under the law. Right. Because you, you don't know what to do. You have to follow the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? Yeah. But then when, when Jesus Christ came, we're now in faith. We don't need now what? We don't need a schoolmaster. We don't need the schoolmaster now. For we are all children of God. We are not we are not under the law no more. Am Amen. I right? Amen. Okay, now we'll go to Galatians chapter four. Chapter four. Okay. Chapter four, verse eighteen. A chapter 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 5, verse 18. Chapter 5, verse 4 first. Chapter 5, verse 4. Yeah, verse 4. Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. Christ is become of me no effect unto you. However, 
whosoever. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. See, you see, you see, it's very clear. Christ has become no effect unto you if you if you follow the law. You that that you are being righteous through law. Am I right, Mom? Amen. Yes, because the law you fallen from grace. Amen. Am I right? Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. You, be, you were Christians for a long time. You don't know you're falling from grace because you're still following the law. Amen. You're falling from grace. So it's it, it just like it's useless to be a Christian then. Amen. Amen. You know, I was thinking, yeah. I was thinking how the law said yeah. how you had to sacrifice an animal yeah. to forgive you of your sins. But we don't have to do that no more because we have to Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. Amen. And, it's, uh, and it's, if you if you if you exert your effort to please God or to become righteous because of your of your works, then it has no effect. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it has no effect. It's like a useless being Christian. Amen. You go to church Sunday. You go. You pay your tithes. You do all the works of the ministry. But then Christ has no effect. Because you're under the law. Amen. Because we're, we're not saved by works. Uh, yeah, by grace. grace. Amen. Amen. Uh, verse 6. Look at verse 6. Verse Chapter 5, verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by okay. love. Okay. Uh, let's go to verse, verse 18. Now. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Okay. If we led by the Spirit, what happened, Mom? Uh, you're not under the law. We are not under the law. <laughs> if we live by the Spirit, we yeah. are not under the law. It's simple. Yeah. Amen. So if you're walking in Spirit, you are not under the law. Amen. So if you're under the law, you're not walking in Spirit. Amen. Let's, let's revise this. If you're walking under the law, you're not. You're not yeah, under the. If you're not walking in Spirit. You're not under the law. Yeah. Amen. If you, if, but if you're walking under the law. You're not under the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you're not spirit. Am I right, Mom? Uh, but let's go to the Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. Four, two, uh, yeah, go back there. Okay. Chapter 1, verses 8 to 10. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Okay. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for the sinners. For unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to the sound doctrine. Okay, see? Anything contrary to sound doctrine is what, Mom? Uh. <laughs> It's contrary. Okay, law is good to who? The law. The law is good to who? But we know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. Okay, but oh, what good is the law? The law is for who? The law is, is not made for righteous man, it's made for the lawless. <laughs> See that? The Bible says it, not us. Amen. The law is made for? The lawless. For the lawless, the unrighteous. Amen. The righteous man doesn't need the law because yes. we're walking under Jesus Christ, Amen. under grace. Amen. So the law is still good if you're not righteous. Amen. I'm right. Yes. <laughs> Does it make sense, Mom? Yes. Okay, let's go to uh, Romans. There's something that I want to read. Galatians 3, verse 13. Galatians. Galatians 3, 13. 3, 13. Chapter 3, verse 13. Okay, I have to find it. <laughs> Galatians, Galatians 3 and uh -huh. 13. And let us go, uh, keep going until, um, until, until 14. Chapter 3, verse 10 to 14. 10 first, 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do good. Oh, do do you see, that? see that? It's clear. Curse is the one that doesn't do what? Curse is the one that doesn't do what? That doesn't obey the what? Law. The law. Curse. So, and so, so the the more you work and you strive hard to follow the law, you are cursed. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible says it. Amen. I'm right. Yes, I'm right. You're yes, right. I'm right. Yes or no? Yes. I say everything I say. It's right because we are. It's, it's Jesus who's 
talking, not us. No? Uh, verse 11, mom. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. See? No man is justified by the law. Law. No man. Verse 13, 12. And the law is not of faith, but the man, the man that doeth them shall live in them. You see? If you do the law, you have to live for it. You have to live for it, and you're like, you're like, there is a, there's a curse and there's a bandage you cannot move. You always feel bad about yourself. You don't follow it. Amen. Am I right, Mom? Verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Okay, where was Jesus Christ hung? On a tree. On a, On a tree. So Jesus Christ became a what? Jesus Christ became a curse. A curse for us. Amen. It's for us. Amen. He took our curse. Amen. So there's no more curse. Amen. So it is it is wrong to believe that you there's a generation of curse. It is wrong to believe that you're cursed and you don't pay your tithes. This is before the cross. Amen. Under the law, yeah, you're cursed. Under the law, before under the law, you're cursed. But after Christ, after the cross, no more curse. Am I right, Mom? Yeah. Okay, so because he became a curse. Yeah. Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. You see that, Mom? You see? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that, the, that, that we might receive the promise. Who wants to receive the promise? Amen. See? You, 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 you want to receive the promise. You have to walk through the Spirit of God, the, the, the grace, Amen. the grace of God. Am I right, Mom? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm right there. Amen. Okay, there's one more. So it became a curse for us. There's no more. There's no more. This is the thing here. This is the thing here. People would say that, oh, you know why these things happen in your life? Because you don't go to church no more. You, you know why this happened in your life? Because you've been bad. That's under the law, Mom. Huh? That's under the law. If you say things like that, that's under the law. Because there is what you you're looking at them, their 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 works. Because you didn't do it right, you 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 are first. That's wrong. Yeah. That's wrong. God is not mad at us no more. Yeah. He's waiting for you to just repent and just um, be born again. Uh, he's not gonna punish you whatever you do. Amen. It's a devil. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not that's, a born again Christian, the devil will yeah, attack yeah. you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But but, he, but I will never leave you nor forsake you. Right. That's what he said. But it's not because you're yeah. not following the law. It's not. It's not because you're not following the law. Amen. Yeah. But but then the punishment comes during the judgment throne. Amen. Of sin. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That, that's where you when there was a judgment throne. Of Amen. Sin. Okay. Let's go to Romans. There's something that I want to read in Romans chapter chapter one. I think it's Romans chapter one, Mom. be justified in his sight for by the law so the knowledge so as the knowledge is sin. You see that? How many how many how many scriptures we read already about the sin? Knowledge of sin is about the law. Amen. Through the law is the knowledge of sin. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, verse twenty one. There's no twenty one. Oh yeah there is. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the and law the and the prophets. 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believes. For there is no difference. 
23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 24. Being justified freely by grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Okay, we are justified freely through? Christ Jesus. No, through? Through grace. Through grace. <laughs> we are justified through? Grace. Grace. Amen. So this is the difference between the law and the law and the grace, Mark. Amen. What a big difference. Amen. The, 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 you don't need to exert your effort. The, uh, uh, under the law, you have to have to do performance. Right. You have to say that I, I have to, I have to fast so I can, I can, I can get this thing. Okay. Fasting is good, but if you're fasting just because you want something from God, that's under the law. That's under the law. You, 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 you're fasting because it's just right, and, and that's a conviction. Amen. Okay, that's, Amen. that's uh, the, everything. Everything that, that that you exert effort is just like saying that you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm God's gonna bless me because I'm serving God. No. Yeah. If you say that, if you say that you're under the law, it means you're exerting your effort, exerting right. your effort. But you're under grace. The grace is already there. Of what we have to do is to just to believe what He has done at the cross. It, because He says it is finished. That is last word. It is finished. Amen. It is finished. So we live. If we live by the Spirit, we are not under the law. Am I right, Mom? So everything. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Again, uh, I'm gonna repeat it. I'm gonna repeat what what the, the what what the what the law says. What, what the law says. Of the, all the the law says is conditional. It's always conditional. But the 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 great grace is unconditional. Because he has that conditional love for us. Amen. And, okay. and the law, if you broke one, you broke them all. Amen. And the law kills. Amen. The, uh, grace. And the grace gives life. life. Okay. Uh, the law is about men's lack of faithfulness. Uh -huh. But but and the grace, Jesus Christ's faithfulness. Amen. Because of him, everything is about him. Amen. Okay. And number uh, four is that the law shines the light of your sin. But and the grace, it shines the light of the perfection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And then uh, the law increasing, but the grace what? Makes us righteous, righteous and holy. And the, the law condemned you, it condemned you, and but the, but grace give you justification. So whenever you hear a preaching man that is condemned, that's under the law. Any preaching that condemned you, that condemns about your sin, yeah. that's under the law. You will feel guilty about it. You'll be going home to think about what you have done, your sin consciousness. You think about what they have done, about the sin you've passed. You're thinking about it. You know, that's that's uh, that's how it is. Oh, I have to. I I, I that's why I I have to reap what I did. But yeah. you're already born again. No. They, they, no more. Well, if they don't ask for forgiveness, they yes, will. They, they will. will. <laughs> yeah, but then, but then. But then you you are you you're born again. You don't need to read. Right, it. that's true. Yeah, I think uh, you're not sin conscious anymore. Okay. But under grace, you are always Jesus Christ consciousness. Amen. Your righteousness to Him. Amen. And under the law, you, it's about the blood animal, like you say, and, and then it takes away. But now under grace, it takes away your sin forever. Amen. He has forgiven our past, present, and future. Amen. There is another thing that I want to uh, emphasize. You know, um, remember. Um, Jesus Christ walked under the law. Do you know, Mom, that Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the book of John, is a continuation of the law? You have to remember that because Jesus Christ walked on the law here. And he said there, if you don't forgive, the Heavenly Father will not forgive you. But under Colossians, if you read in Colossians, I have forgiven you. I, I, I love one another as I forgave you. I forgave you. See, He has forgiven us already. Amen. Finished. Amen. So He has forgiven us. So God is so wonderful. Amen. And and um, uh, there are three things that the the grace can do for us. Let's let's end here, Mom. Hebrews eight. Hebrews We're gonna eight. end here. Yeah. Hebrews eight. There are three things that the um, under grace can do for us. There are three things that it can do for us if we're under grace. Hebrews chapter eight. Um, another thing, mom, on, 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 under the law, mom, if you if you sin, it will go to your third to fourth generation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but then um, under grace, you won't remember you sin no more. Amen. No more third or fourth generation. Amen. Chapter eight, verse ten. 
chapter 8, verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of, of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Seven. And there shall not teach, and they shall not teach every man his neighbors, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For Twelve. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Okay, thirteen. In that he said. A new covenant. He hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Have you ever uh, 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 used a card that is expired in the store? Yeah, yeah. Even, even whatever card, food stamp or credit card, mm -hmm. and they said your card is expired. Yeah. Declined. Yeah. Expired. Yeah. That is now the old covenant is decayeth. What does it say in the last? Last verse, Mom? It was ready to vanish away. To vanish away. Decay yet and wax old is ready to vanish, vanish away. away. Amen. It's not it's not relevant anymore. Amen. Okay, so because we have a new covenant. Amen. But it says here there are three things that God can do under the the new covenant. Uh, verse 8, verse 10 it says that this is the covenant that I will make to the house of Israel. After this says to say the Lord, I will put my laws into your mind and write them into your hearts. And I will be with them God and they shall be my people. So the, the, under the grace, it will guide us to live right. Amen. It's because, because it will put the laws in our heart and mind. So he will guide us to live right. Right, Amen. right, to Amen. live right, yes. and to believe right, Amen. right? Amen. That's the first thing that the, the new covenant can do. And, and number number two, number two, it says here, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. So it means that he can, he can work miracle for you. Grace can work miracle for you Amen. because he always say, "I will, I will." The old covenant, mom, the old the, 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 under the law, he, he always say, "Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not." Yeah. Under the new covenant, he say, "I will, I will, I Amen. will. I will do this. I will, I will, I will." Amen. So he can work miracles for you. First is he will guide you to be righteous, and then the second one is he will give you miracle. He will work with your miracle. Because I, I will not remember, I will work with you unrighteousness, is what Jesus said. Amen. You see? And the third one is, look at verse 11, 8 verse 11. Um, you, can, you can love and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, for the least to the greatest. No, you can, you can know the Lord without, without exerting your effort, without performing. You can, you can love the Lord without performing. Amen. All right? Amen. So without 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 performing, you can you can sleep right. You you know that Jesus loves you. The more you see that Jesus loves you, the more you love him. Amen. You see, Peter, Mom, Peter always say, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord. And then he denied the, the Lord three times. Yes. I love you, Lord. So it's very dangerous to say, I love my Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my with, with all my, my, my heart. And then you lie. Yeah. That's not loving God. Or you did you did something that's not loving God. But Peter is I love you Lord, I love you Lord. And he denied he denied uh, Jesus Christ three times. But then the love of God is with him. This is not the grace. Because of his grace to Peter, he used Peter. Remember the Acts of the Apostles? Yes. He preached and how many people were saved? Five. No? What? Three? Three. Three. No. <laughs> 3,000 people were saved. 3,000 people were yeah. saved. And Peter yeah. preached. He used him. Amen. After he denied Jesus, the grace of God is still there. Amen. If Judas only repented, Mom, he killed himself, right? Mm -hmm. Because he betrayed you. If only he repented, God is still merciful in his grace. Yeah. He's probably going to use Judas. Yeah. Like Paul. Paul persecuted Christian. He uses Paul now. Amen. See, this, this is the grace of God. Amen. No matter how bad you are, He's not looking at your badness. He's waiting for you to come to Him. For the grace is always He supplies, He supplies. Yeah. Your righteousness, your justification, your good life. Uh, he, gave, he, he, gave, he gave us all, all everything. 
pertaining to life Amen. and godliness. Amen. That's how that's that's the difference of law and grace, grace. mom. Amen. So you know Amen. which will you prefer? Which will you prefer grace. right now? Grace. Huh? Grace. <laughs> grace. But the law is still good to the one who is not righteous Amen. because it will it will give him it will give him like a map. Yeah. A guideline, a, a guide. Is a is a, what do you call the thing that we use when we drive? A GPS. GPS. <laughs> the law is still a GPS. Amen. But if 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 uh, we establish the law, how will we establish the law? Because without the law, we did not recognize Jesus Christ is the one that can that can help us everything. Amen. We we did not recognize Jesus Christ that that we need him. We did not represent Jesus Christ that he is our Savior. Again, if the law gave us righteousness, Jesus Christ would have came. But Jesus Christ came. Amen. It means the law didn't, didn't give you righteousness. No. I'm right, Mom. No, amen. I'm right. It condemned us. It condemned us. So we have, to, we have to open up our mind now. You amen. know, but this, this is what you call ignorance. Mm -hmm. The people are being destroyed by their ignorance. I was once ignorant, too. I was once ignorant. You want to pray, Mom? Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this uh, Bible study. Dear Heavenly Father, with uh, my daughter-in-law, dear Jesus, we we ask that you bless the Lord, that your word go out, dear Heavenly Father, and that it that it fall, Lord Jesus, on good ground, dear Heavenly Father. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word that you came and you died for us, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day, Lord, and for everything that you did for us, Jesus. In your name, we pray. Thank you for your Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I hope you like what you heard about law and grace. But there's something I want to add regarding about law and grace. Um, Galatians 4, it says here, chapter 4, verse 4, When the fullness of time was come, the fullness was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. See, Jesus Christ walked under the law. He lived under the law. He walked under the law. He followed under the law, uh, law, which is the Mosaic law, ceremonial law. There's a lot of laws of Mosaic law. Uh, verse 5, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So why Jesus Christ came? To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. So if you're walking under the law and following the law, you you oh you 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 still don't have the right to become sons of God. And verse six, and because you are sons, God had sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba Father. So that's the only way to become sons and children of God to send Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Son of when Je Jesus Christ is the Son of God, right? And He became the Son of Man. That's why you see that in Bible. He became He became a Son of Man when He became flesh. That's the only way that we become sons of God. So all the sons of men and daughters of men, we are to for for him to to be to be the he okay this let's put it this way jesus christ is the son of god right he became the son of man when he became flesh he has to do it in order for us to be to become sons of god and daughters of god for him to become the son of man so that the sons of men and daughters of men become sons of God. Does it make clear? Okay, God bless you. Remember that Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. That's the reason why Jesus walked on earth to redeem us from the law, those who are walking under the law. So get it from law or law, Mosaic law. It will put you to bondage. Uh, we are under grace. I just believe what he has done but he's, he would say i will the agreement of the covenant the new covenant is he said i will do this for you i this is the promise i will not break it i will give you good life i will give you eternal life i will give you all the provision protection i will give everything that you need in life i will i will no more no i will give you favors and blessings 
everything. I will give you all the abundance of my grace. I will, I will. What do you do with agreement now? You just say, I believe. I believe you will do it. I believe you will do it. That's all you have to say. I believe I am an heir. I'm a joint heir in your kingdom. Amen. To God be the glory. May you uh, learn something in this in this dialogue and conversation. God bless you. Think about the love of God. Uh, the more you feel the love of Jesus, the more you fall in love to Him. To Him. God bless you. Bye bye.